Since the year 2000, the world has experienced 47 explosive volcanic eruptions. But of those 47 eruptions, only three have been within the United States, and those were all within Alaska, well away from America's major population centers. But the United States has 169 active volcanoes, and three of those are considered to be extremely dangerous due to their proximity to the Seattle and Portland metropolitan regions. So when can we expect the next major volcanic eruption, and why is Mount Rainier specifically so dangerous? Volcanoes are an incredible part of our planet. Every once in a while, one decides to explode in dramatic fashion, wreaking havoc on nearby ecosystems and populations. But despite being well a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the United States has gotten quite lucky in its recent history of volcanic activity. But that luck won't last forever. That said, for those of you near the Rocky Mountains, you're mostly safe. And we're going to talk about that too. Hey, go check out the Patreon if you want access to even more geography by me. I've been sharing early videos and exclusive posts for a few weeks now, and it's only going to get better from here. So head on over. The United States is firmly within the Pacific Ring of Fire, but you wouldn't know it because most of its volcanoes have been pretty quiet in recent decades. And the most prominent and active volcanic regions within the country are either in Hawaii, which is usually bubbling lava somewhere, or on Alaska's long and mostly unpopulated Aleutian Islands. But California, Oregon, and Washington are all home to dozens of active volcanoes as well. They just haven't done much since Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. All told, Alaska is home to the highest concentration of volcanoes in the country, with over 130 that are still listed as active, the majority of which are part of the Aleutian Arc. This arc extends from the Alaska Peninsula through the Aleutian Islands, where the Pacific Plate subducts beneath the North American Plate. Notable volcanoes in Alaska include Mount Redoubt, Mount Spur, and Augustine Volcano, all of which have had significant eruptions in recent history. But while all three mountains are within 100 miles of Anchorage, and the towns on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula, none cause significant damage outside of ash cleanup costs. Hawaii, the United States' other overly active volcanic state, is situated over a volcanic hotspot in the central Pacific Ocean. The Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanic eruptions, and the state currently has five active volcanoes, Kilauea, Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, Hualalai, and Haleakala. Kilauea, located on the Big Island of Hawaii, is one of the most active volcanoes on Earth, with near-constant eruptions since 1983. In the contiguous United States, the Cascade Range, which stretches from Northern California through Oregon and Washington, is a significant volcanic region. This range is part of the Cascadia Subduction Zone, where the Juan de Fuca Plate is subducting beneath the North American Plate. The Cascade Range is home to Mount St. Helens in Washington, which famously erupted in 1980, as well as Mount Rainier near Tacoma and Seattle, and Mount Hood near Portland. California also hosts several active volcanic sites, including Mount Shasta, Lassen Peak, and the Long Valley Caldera. Lassen Peak, located in the Lassen Volcanic National Park, last erupted in 1915, while the Long Valley Caldera is known for its large-scale eruptions that occurred over 760,000 years ago, but still shows signs of geothermal activity today. Overall, the United States has 169 active volcanoes, with Alaska and Hawaii having the most significant concentrations. Alaska's Aleutian Arc and Hawaii's hotspot volcanoes contribute to the country's volcanic prominence, while the Cascade Range in the Pacific Northwest and several notable sites in California also play crucial roles in the United States' volcanic landscape. These regions not only shape the geography of the United States, but also have significant implications for nearby population centers. The United States is a very volcanically active country, but in recent decades, most of its volcanoes outside of Hawaii have been deceptively quiet. But before we get to the history of volcanic eruptions in the United States, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. The United States has a long history of volcanic eruptions, but it's particularly punctuated by several significant and destructive events that have left lasting marks on the landscape and communities in recent decades. Among these, the eruptions of Mount St. Helens, Kilauea, and Mount Lassen stand as some of the most devastating in terms of their impact on human life, property, and the environment. Mount St. Helens, located about 50 miles north of Portland in Washington state, is infamous for its dramatic eruption on May 18, 1980. This event is considered the most destructive volcanic eruption in U.S. history. The eruption was preceded by a two-month series of earthquakes and steam venting episodes. A massive debris avalanche triggered by an earthquake measuring 5.1 on the Richter scale caused the north face of the volcano to collapse. 
resulting in a lateral blast. The eruption sent a plume of ash 80,000 feet into the atmosphere and deposited ash across 11 states. The immediate vicinity was devastated, with the lateral blast flattening forests and the debris avalanche covering 23 square miles. 57 people lost their lives, and the eruption caused over a billion dollars in damage, destroying homes, infrastructure, and natural resources. It also permanently changed the skyline view from Portland, Oregon due to its collapsed cone. Previously, Mount St. Helens was considered the American Mount Fuji due to its resemblance. Kilauea, located on the Big Island of Hawaii, has been erupting continuously from its East Rift Zone since 1983. One of the most significant episodes occurred in 2018 when a series of eruptions and earthquakes dramatically reshaped the landscape. The eruptions began in May, following the collapse of the Pu'u'u'u crater. Lava flows from the fissures in the Lilania State's area destroyed over 700 homes, displaced thousands of residents, and covered over 13 square miles of land. The lava reached the ocean, creating new land, but also releasing hazardous gases and causing acid rain. The 2018 eruption was one of the most destructive in Kilauea's history, but it wasn't its last eruption. Since then, Kilauea has erupted every year except 2022. Mount Lassen in California experienced a series of eruptions between 1914 and 1921, with the most significant event occurring on May 22, 1915. The eruption produced a pyroclastic flow that devastated the northeastern slope of the volcano, destroying forests and creating a large debris field. The eruption column rose 30,000 feet into the air, spreading volcanic ash as far as 200 miles away. Although the eruption did not cause any fatalities, it significantly impacted the surrounding area, leading to the establishment of Lassen Volcanic National Park to protect and study the region. Another notable eruption occurred at Novarupta in Alaska, part of the Katmai Volcanic Cluster, in June 1912. This eruption is considered the largest volcanic eruption of the 1900s. It ejected more than three cubic miles of magma and created the Valley of 10,000 Smokes, filled with ash flows. Fortunately, due to the remote location, there were no human casualties, but the eruption profoundly impacted the region's ecology and geology. And that's basically it as far as destructive volcanoes go in recent history. The United States, for being such a volcanically active country, has managed to escape any considerable damage caused by them. But that doesn't mean the country will always be safe from volcanic eruptions, specifically the Cascade Volcanoes. The Cascade Mountain Range, stretching from Northern California through Oregon and Washington, is considered to be one of the most dangerous volcanic regions in the United States. This region's volcanic threat is heightened by the proximity of several major urban centers, including Portland, Seattle, and Tacoma, to active volcanoes such as Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, and Mount Rainier. Mount St. Helens, located about 50 miles northeast of Portland, is infamous for its catastrophic eruption on May 18, 1980. This eruption, which caused 57 deaths and extensive damage, remains a stark reminder of the potential devastation these volcanoes can unleash. Today, Mount St. Helens is closely monitored due to its history of activity and potential for future eruptions. Scientists predict that Mount St. Helens will erupt again, although the timing and scale are uncertain. Regardless, when it does, it will be very noticeable from Portland. Speaking of Portland, Mount Hood, the tallest mountain in Oregon, is also only about 50 miles from the city. Although it hasn't erupted since the 1790s, Mount Hood is considered an active volcano with the potential for future eruptions. The primary concern with Mount Hood is the risk of volcanic mud flows called lahars, which could devastate the surrounding areas, including parts of the Portland metropolitan area. Lahars can occur even without an eruption, as the heat from the volcano melts the mountain's significant snow and ice cover. But it's actually Mount Rainier, located approximately 60 miles southeast of Seattle and Tacoma, that poses one of the greatest volcanic threats in the United States. Standing at 14,411 feet, it is the highest peak in the Cascade Range and is heavily glaciated. An eruption or significant seismic activity could trigger massive lahars capable of reaching the densely populated areas of Seattle and Tacoma. Historic lahars from Mount Rainier have traveled as far as the Puget Sound, and current studies suggest that similar events could have catastrophic impacts on infrastructure and communities in the region. Though it should be noted that the odds of a lahar actually reaching Seattle is pretty slim. The potential damage from all three of these volcanoes is multifaceted. Beyond the immediate impact of eruptions, such as pyroclastic flows and ash fall, the secondary effects like lahars and floods can cause widespread destruction. Lahars can bury valleys and structures under thick mud, disrupt transportation networks, and contaminate water supplies. 
ash clouds can pose serious hazards to aviation, clogging engines, and impairing visibility for millions of people who live in nearby major cities. Thankfully, the United States Geological Survey and other scientific bodies continuously monitor these volcanoes to provide early warnings and mitigate risks. The USGS National Volcanic Early Warning System aims to improve the monitoring and hazard assessment of high-threat volcanoes, focusing on those with the potential to impact large population centers. So while Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood could wreak havoc in the future when they next erupt, we should have plenty of warning to get prepared before they actually do. Today, the Seattle metropolitan region, including Tacoma, would be the most in danger by a volcanic eruption due to their proximity to Mount Rainier. This means that over 4 million people could be either directly or indirectly harmed should Rainier blow its top. A further 2.5 million people in Portland would also be affected if Mount Hood erupted as well. And while neither cities are close enough to be completely destroyed, such as ancient Pompeii with Mount Vesuvius, it still won't be a fun time for anyone nearby, especially the many smaller towns that are much closer. But while this video has mainly been about volcanoes near or within the Pacific Ocean, it might make you think, why aren't there more active volcanoes in the United States' largest and most prominent mountain range, the Rocky Mountains? The Rocky Mountains, the most prominent mountain range in the United States, are noticeably devoid of active volcanoes outside of the Yellowstone region. This lack of volcanic activity can be attributed to the unique geologic history and tectonic settings of the Rockies, which differ significantly from other volcanic regions in the United States. The formation of the Rocky Mountains, which extends from Canada through the central United States to New Mexico, is primarily the result of tectonic processes that occurred during the Laramide orogeny. This orogeny, which took place approximately 80 to 55 million years ago, was characterized by the collision and subsequent compression of the Pacific Plate beneath the North American Plate. This tectonic interaction led to the uplift and formation of the Rockies, creating a range that is predominantly composed of sedimentary, metamorphic, and ancient igneous rocks, rather than the younger, more active volcanic rocks found in the Cascades. Moreover, the Rockies are situated in the interior of the North American Plate, far from the Pacific Ring of Fire, where most of the world's volcanoes are found. This intraplate location means that the tectonic forces necessary to create and sustain active volcanoes are largely absent. Yellowstone National Park, located at the eastern edge of the Rockies, is an exception due to its position over a volcanic hotspot. The Yellowstone Caldera, a supervolcano, is one of the few areas in the Rockies with significant volcanic activity. This hotspot has produced massive eruptions over the past 2 million years, the most recent of which occurred approximately 640,000 years ago. However, the volcanic activity associated with the Yellowstone hotspot is not indicative of the broader Rocky Mountain region, as it is a localized geologic phenomenon. And that's basically it. The Rocky Mountains were formed much earlier and with a tectonic pattern that didn't rely on the explosion of volcanoes in the same way that the Cascade Mountain Range did. And outside of the Yellowstone Caldera, the Rocky Mountains are pretty safe as far as volcanic eruptions go. The Cascades will blow again at some point, and it will likely be Mount St. Helens again. But if it happens to be Mount Hood in Oregon or Mount Rainier in Washington State, the nearby cities of Portland and Seattle could find themselves in some trouble. You've learned a lot about volcanoes and the Pacific Northwest this week, so why not end today's video by checking out one of these amazing maps over on my map store? Any of them would make a great addition to your home. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the United States volcanoes and where the most active ones are. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to watch more videos, click here. If you want to check out my podcast, click here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.